Hello everyone. Hola a todos y bienvenidos. My name is Taylor and I will be your guiding artist for the next two weeks of camp. I am a fiber artist and I live in Milwaukee. It's nice to meet you all. Being a fiber artist means that I make art with fabric. One of my favorite things to do is to dye fabric, paint and print on it, then cut it up and make it into a sculpture. I use sticks and wire and found objects as well in my sculptures. We are going to follow a similar process over the next two weeks, starting with dyeing our material. For Dyeing Exploration Week, please gather a few items of clothing you may have in your home that are white or light in color and 100% cotton. I suggest an old white t-shirt, maybe some socks, um, anything that you'd like to add some color to. Make sure whatever clothing that you use has already been in the wash machine and through the laundry. That means that the bandana you received in your kit has to be washed first. This is very important because the dye may not stick if it's not washed. You may need an adult to help you this week. In your kit is a sheet with directions for the dyeing process and the washing process. You can follow that along with whoever is helping you. The cardboard box that you received your supplies in is valuable to our project. We want to use it as a mat to keep our surroundings safe from dye. So flatten it out and tape it. You'll see my mat that I made from a cardboard box in the first video. I also wear gloves and an apron or an old shirt to do my artwork in because who knows what will happen, but let's try to respect the space and the people around us who help us clean up. Our first lesson is in shibori dyeing. Shibori dyeing is a traditional technique from Japan. Here it is often known as tie dye. That means that we use rubber bands, string, and other materials to create a spot in the fabric that we don't want the dye to go. I'll show many techniques along the way. Please be experimental with mixing colors, and if you've tie dyed before and have tried some of these things, be willing to try something new. Maybe try them all. Okay, let's get started. After you've flattened your box, cover it with plastic. Use multiple plastic bags or one large garbage bag. Our first technique is the classic swirl design. Choose where you want the swirl center. Pinch and begin twisting. Next, cross your rubber bands around your shirt, trying your best to keep it a circle. Yay, now it's time to add the dye. Love says adding her colors in sections to go with the spiral shape. Okay, so this shirt was semi-damp when we started. Experimenting with different levels of wetness on your fabric makes a difference on how your colors disperse. The more wet you make your fabric, the further the color will blend and bleed into each other. Now, my brother is just experimenting with a random bundle he made creatively and is just dip dyeing around. He'll open it up to get some more on the inside, which is a good idea. And now he'll put it in a plastic bag to store. Keep your projects separate, I would recommend, in, your, in their bags and tie them tight and just let them sit. This next technique will make circles on your shirt. Pinch up pieces 
and rubber band around them. Uh, it kind of feels like making a ponytail in your hair. You can make them wherever you want, as many as you want, and as big or small as you want. Oh, okay. Oh, here's my nephew. He's curious. And I'm just randomly going to make these funky circles. I'm pinching up both sides of the fabric so they'll appear on the back and front side. But I'm also not too worried about what's going to happen, which is what's cool about tie-dye um, and how we're doing it this summer, which is to enjoy being outside, being around our family or friends or whoever's around us, and not caring too much about the final result because it's always usually pretty magical and if not it's interesting if it's not your favorite look okay so the rubber bands are fun but i'd like everyone to at least try something with string one project here's one way to use your string tie it tight at one end or have someone help you twist slowly and tight all the way down that you can eventually tie it back together again from the other end. So you're making a little bundle. So when we're talking about shibori dyeing, we're talking about resist dyeing, which means we are using different tools like string and rubber bands to create a resist in the fabric. We are resisting where the, we want the dye to go. We are blocking the dye from going in that space to ultimately make a mark, like a stripe or a circle, etc. Traditional and modern day shibori artists do uh, very specific patterns with how they fold their cloth, how they tie it, and we're being more experimental, but here's a way to get a little more intricate. I'm tying rocks into my shirt to make small, tight circles. Make sure for all your projects that your string or rubber bands are fairly tight. Otherwise, it won't create that resist that we're talking about to stop the dye from going in that place. Another traditional shibori technique involves wrapping cloth around a pole or a wooden dowel. I'm going to use a plastic container. I'm not only tying my fabric around it, but I'm going to fold it a few times as well to see what type of variation that makes. Because I'm tying my string mostly horizontally across the shirt, I am hoping to make horizontal stripes. I'm also applying my dye in horizontal stripes to add to that effect. And just like everything else, this one will go into its own plastic bag and wait until tomorrow.
Next, we'll try batik dyeing. Traditionally, hot wax is used to make our mark. We will use glue. Batik originated in Indonesia. For this strategy, the glue acts as our resist, as the string and the rubber bands did. When the glue dries, it will act as our resist by blocking the dye from going in those places. We are being very free with our mark making right now because it's a baby doing it, but I suggest for this part of the project to get more specific. You can use the glue to make letters or patterns that are very detailed. I would like to see people try that. Now it's time to leave the glue to dry. It works well to keep it out in the sun. It is very important that the glue is completely hard and dry before you add dye. This time I'm going to apply my dye using a paintbrush. If you don't want any color on the back of your shirt or project, put a plastic bag inside. This project also has to wait overnight. You can put plastic over the top of it to keep it safe, but make sure you keep it flat and nice until you wash it when the glue will disappear and it will probably look awesome. This idea is something to try if you have an adult with you or an adult's permission. I'm mixing one cup of bleach in a large bowl of water. This is called a discharge dye bath, which means it subtracts the dyes that are already in the fabric. I tied up my pieces. I'm using black cotton shirts and socks to put in and sit. I put a rock on top to keep it down. This is a much faster process than the other projects because it can take only a half hour or more or less until you start to see the colors changing before your eyes. Don't let it sit longer than two hours and when you're ready squeeze so you don't get bleach splashing around. Squeeze it tight and put it in a plastic bag to be carried to the wash. After the appropriate amount of time Rinse your projects individually with warm water. Cut the bands or string with scissors. Rinse very well. Squeeze out the excess dye or bleach into the sink. Try to squeeze and rinse the cloth until the water runs clear. This is my favorite part. The reveal is always exciting and different. Set your wash machine to warm and use a small amount of detergent. If you did a bleach project, do not wash it with your other projects. Here are some results after the washing machine. You never know what's going to happen, where the dye will go, or how it will blend together. This one is after the glue was washed away. Some critical questions to think while you're working are, how is dyeing similar to painting and drawing? And what happens when the colors connect with each other and water? Thank you for participating. Remember to share your photos and contact me with any questions. I'll be available.